the most uninnovative, kind of old school person gets the opportunity to lead the Air Force warfighting integration capability, arguably are more innovative and connections into the AFWorks part of the house. And so what I want to do today is kind of illuminate some of the work that we are doing within the warfighting integration capability, but more so across the enterprise to really identify how the Air Force plans to get at some of our enterprise level challenges, which is kind of what this fusion event is, is all about. Before I get started, I want to say one thing for the Defense Works. I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to the Defense Works for all the work that went into helping put this fusion event on and the teamwork that is going on with AFWorks for uh, everything today. I mean, because it takes, this is a joint multi domain problem. That includes other services, it includes the intelligence community, it includes foreign partners, okay? To really be able to come to a point where we see convergence, convergence of capabilities across the spectrum of this multi-domain problem where we are synergizing or creating uh, this convergence of, of space, air, land, surface, subsurface, and cyber so that we can execute thousands of kill chains in hundreds of hours. And that's the challenge. And it's really a concept of convergence of capabilities where, you know, in the past, I submit multi-domain operations. We've been doing multi-domain operations. I did it uh, as an operator. General Harris did it as an operator. You all in the audience have done it in an oper as an operator, but we use the sneaker net. We use humans in the loop. Uh, we use duct tape, and we use sticky notes. The vision is to move the Air Force into the future with digital capability with humans out and maybe humans on the loop so that we can get to this point where we're converging capabilities in, of, of thousands of kill chains in hundreds of hours. So we thought about in the old days of deconfliction, and then we think about interoperability, but can we really get to interdependence? And do we trust enough of folks that either don't wear the same uniform we do, or they're in the civilian side of our department or they're in the civilian side of the uh, intelligence communities to become truly interdependent to create that convergence. And so with AFWIC, I'll say, let me give a quick paid political announcement for AFWIC. Uh, I see my mission in four words. Design, integrate, develop, and impact. Design the future concept of the Air Force. What does that look like? Sharks with laser beams in the future, if we believe that's going to be effective against the enemy, then that's where we're going to go. Probably not going to be effective against the enemy. But what does that future concept look like? That's a multi fight up problem. And how do we begin to pivot towards that? The ability to integrate across our core functions of, of ISR, rapid global mobility, cyber, space, air, and be able to bring that together at Enterprise Solution so that the chief and the secretary don't have to do it at the end game. Execute capability development from the point that we want to see cross-functional teams that converge on a particular problem and they're able to do it quickly across the staffs, quickly across industry, so that we can accelerate getting capability. And I don't want to get caught up in the JSIDS alphabet soup but I want our four stars and our senior civilians to be providing guidance to our cross-functional teams for capability development. And then finally, the chief wouldn't let me off the hook, impact, impact resource decisions. And so we have to work extremely closely with our A8 and how do we bring the future faster and how do we begin, begin to pivot and how do we identify the most challenging problems of figuring out how to create the offset so that we can move into the future. So the national defense strategy, arguably uh, a document in my 33 years in the Air Force, I've not seen our department congeal around the concept that's in the national defense strategy for near peer competition. And so for the folks with gray hair in the audience, we grew up with a bit of that in the Cold War, okay? And we're pivoting back to that 
near-peer competition. And we actually have five missions in the Air Force. Homeland defense, execute foundational national secure, or pardon me, execute foundational nuclear deterrence, be prepared to defeat a near peer, hold another peer to deter aggression, and then continuing to fight counter violent extremists. That is a tall order. But that's why a concept that I have of captains and staff sergeants and young airmen and industry, you all have the smarts on how to do it. Folks with gray hair and no hair have the authority to enable you. Okay, so let's go to the first video. Copy, Hog Zero One. So, when you look at that video, you say, wow, that's pretty cool, it's great, uh, good guys won against the enemies. And I look at that video and I go, wow, man, that took a long time. Wow, there's a lot of calm in there. Holy cow, that's in a permissive environment. The concept we have for multi-domain operations is to extend a kill chain into a highly contested environment, and again, be able to do this in thousands of kill chains in hundreds of hours. And so I submit the permissive environment that we just saw with the A-10 in Afghanistan is not what we need to be prepared for in the future. And we've had the luxury of executing our operations over the last 20 years in domains that are relatively uncontested. But what are we beginning to see now? We're beginning to see contested space in cyber. We're beginning to see contested space in space. And we're seeing this in all areas when we start pivoting towards a near peer. And that's why we need your brain power to help bring these solutions forward. And we need, it to, do, and we need to do this more quickly. And oh, by the way, we're not going to have resources, additional resources, whether it's personnel or whether it's, it's funding. So we need to be able to do it within what we've already been allocated. This is just a picture of a B-2, or pardon me, a B-52 the aft crew compartment where you see the electronic warfare officers. So it's a combination of digital, it's a combination of analog, and it's a combination of yellow stickies. We want to move away from that. And so the Internet of Things, the concept for multi-domain operations enabled by multi-domain command and control otherwise known now potentially as joint all-domain C2. So don't get too wound up on the acronyms. 
but the concept of the convergence of having a network where people are able to plug in seamless capabilities. And so the Internet of Things, as the example of the house on the uh, left-hand side of the slide, is where we want to be able to go with a battle network. Where again, on the right-hand side, you're able to see the command and control element. You're able to see capabilities, whether it's air, whether it's space, whether it's cyber, that are coming together into an operations center, or if that operations center is not connected, the capabilities default forward to the edge. That's the where we see capabilities in the future. And so from the Air Force warfighting integration perspective, in the upper left-hand side of the slide, you see an Air Force operating concept. You can erase Air Force there and put joint and frankly, we cheated a bit, because if you look at the slide closely, you need to be able to observe, and so I need an intuitive sensing grid over the battle space. I'd like that to be a collaborative intuitive sensing grid. I need to be able to transport that data. The data needs to be discoverable. I need to have some element of multi-level security in there so that the proper eyes get access to the data. That data needs to be transported, and then someone needs to make a decision. Whether that decision's made back in the operations center, or that decision is defaulting forward from a concept of ops, that's where we see the future. And frankly, based on where we see the future, we see the ability to be able to fight in space, in, from, and through, we see the ability to, to execute true multi-domain command and control where networks are connected together seamlessly. We have to generate capacity of fires. We have to be able to generate combat power. How do you do that? And then finally, we need to do and execute logistics under attack. If we're able to pull these things together, that's how we see the future Air Force operating. So I put John Boyd's picture there in the upper left-hand corner because the bottom line is our operating concept is effectively the ability to, to conver create convergence of capabilities at a time and place of our choosing across multiple domains of space, air, land, subsurface, and cyber to create the effects. We see multi-domain command and control or joint all-domain command and control as the Air Force's number one priority. And so what we have done in AFWIC, in concert with AFWORKS, with what you all are doing here, have stood up a cross-functional team led by a one-star, Brigadier General Dave Kumashiro, Kumo. He is working really closely and uh, across the entire enterprise. That means acquisition with Mr. Preston Dunlap. That means data. With Eileen Verdreen. That means the pipes with Bill Marion. That means domains with Kim Kreider in space, Bob Skinner at 24th Air Force. Our intent is to create this enterprise solution with multiple cross functional teams that are working in concert. And I'm going to tell you, it's not perfect, and it won't be perfect, but as Beam said earlier, all I'm going to ask is that we move the ball forward, establish what problems we're trying to solve, and move the ball forward. And so as you look at the uh, decomposition of where we see the major concept at the left here of multi-domain operations, it further breaks down into operational concepts, the capabilities that we need to execute C2, where we've stood up 13, the 13-0 uh, career field. Uh, the advanced battle management now family of systems because it's gonna it crosses every you can't turn I turn over a rock every day and I go, oh that's multi-domain command and control. So how we pull this together is gonna be challenging, but we're ready to take it on. We further decompose that into the areas I talked about earlier. You need to be able to sense it. You have to have data that's discoverable. You have to have this appropriate level of security. We have to have pipes for connectivity. Who's creating applications? And then finally, we create threads of more detailed uh, um, areas that we're going to be able to trace to 
exactly what we're investing in. And then I'll just finally finish with a vision of the future, and it's about a one-minute video uh, of uh, what we see multi-domain command and control and how we can create this synergy. Next, please. So in closing, all I'd like to say is thank you. Thank you for the brain power that's in the room. Thank you to the captains and staff sergeants and young airmen because you have the know-how. Industry, whether you're a prime or whether you're a small, I absolutely believe you have technology and you have capabilities currently right now. And we, as a Department of Defense or an Air Force in particular, need to make it easier for you to be able to contribute to that. And that's the whole intent of what we're doing here in the Fusion event. I also want to give a great shout out to Beam uh, and the AFWorks team and DefenseWorks for allowing me to take some time today. Thank you.